Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the full story of season three. I know a lot of you come to the channel to watch these story videos, and if you do, I really appreciate it. But one thing I was looking at recently is my analytics, and it turns out only 13% of people who normally watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. And I do these story videos about once a week, sometimes even more. So if you like what you see here, want to see more, the best way to see more is by hitting that subscribe button. And if you want a notification, you can hit that notification icon, and it'll get, keep you notified whenever I upload a video. Also, every night, Monday through Friday, I stream on Twitch at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tonight, we're going to be having some drinks, playing some Warzone. So if you want to check that out, first link down in the description. Hopefully, I see you there. But without further ado, let's dive into the story of Season 3. As you guys know, this week, Season 3 was released for Modern Warfare. And with Season 3, there was a new cutscene added in. And never... And I mean never have I been asked so many questions about a story of such a small individual cutscene. And this cutscene does have a lot more information than you first meets the eye. First of all, this cutscene relates to both the Season 1 and Season 2 cutscenes to tie together an overarching story, which we'll dive into. But it also progresses the story of two individual characters to a pretty large extent. First of all, Ghost, Alex, and even Price a little bit as well. And in today's video, we are going to dive into that story. Story, the full story of season three. But to start things out, we first need to have a look at that cutscene. So here it is. Simon. Price. Can you talk? I can listen. The client's plan is working. The armistice in Verdansk is officially fallen. Chaos. Tell me something I don't know. I got a fire team. Operators inbound hot to your position. They better be good. They are. Echo 3 1 reporting for duty. Alex. I thought you were dead. Still standing. You ready for a gunfire? Let's get evil. So the first thing I need to address is right off the hop, Captain Price is on the radio with Ghost and he says a name. And a lot of people think that he called Ghost Soap, as in Soap McTavish from Modern Warfare 2. So just to clear it up, here is what he says. Simon. So here's the thing. He doesn't say soap. I don't want to be the baron of bad news, but here we are. So I never personally heard him say soap, but what he actually says here is Simon, as in Simon Riley, which is of course Ghost's full name. He goes by Simon Ghost Riley. And just to prove it, what I did is I slowed down the audio and turned up the volume on it. And when you do so, you can very clearly hear him say Simon as opposed to soap. So very clearly, as you can hear there, he is saying Simon, not Soap, for Simon Ghost Riley. But now that we've got that out of the way, at the end of the cutscene, we find out that Alex is still alive and kicking, just this time only kicking with one leg. Now, if you don't remember, what happened to Alex at the end of the campaign is all of them were storming Roman Barkov's gas facility, planning on blowing it up. But upon getting to the gas facility, they find out that the remote detonator has broken, and Basically, Alex offers himself to go in and blow it up himself, essentially sentencing himself to death. But as I said before, if you don't see someone die in a movie or video game, they are probably not dead. And as we find out, that is 100% true. Now, the second thing that kind of confused me here is why was this cutscene taking place on Rust? But it turns out it actually makes quite a bit of sense. You see, the last mission of the Modern Warfare campaign takes place in the country of Georgia. Now, before Rust was launched into Modern Warfare, they actually put out a little bit of a teaser on a Snapchat filter, and this came alongside with some coordinates. And when you put those coordinates into Google GPS, it actually led you to, once again, the country of 
of Georgia. So the events of this cutscene compared to the ending events of the Modern Warfare campaign are actually in extreme close proximity. So here's where things get weird. So first of all, we find out in this cutscene, it appears as though Captain Price has known that Alex wasn't dead this entire time. The reason why we know this is because in this cutscene, Captain Price says that he's sending a group of operators to help Ghost out on his current mission. I got a fire team. Operators inbound hold to your position. They better be good. They are. And then we find out that one of those operators that, of course, Captain Price sent was none other than Alex. But it gets weirder because Ghost recognizes Alex right away. Echo 3 1 reporting for duty. Alex, thought you were dead. Now, this means one of two things. Either Price told Ghost about Alex and his death, or two, Ghost knew Alex before the events of Modern Warfare. You see, there was always a little plot hole in the story of Modern Warfare, and that's the fact that at the end of the game, we finally get to hear that Captain Price has wanted to put together a task force called Task Force 141. What are you calling this task force? 141. Now here's the thing that didn't make any sense to me. Throughout the entire campaign, Alex was always wearing a patch on his shoulder that was the logo for Task Force 141. Now, apparently, according to the story of Modern Warfare, this is before Task Force 141 ever existed. However, after this cutscene in Season 3, what appears to make more sense is that Task Force 141 existed prior to the events of Modern Warfare, it was just not under the jurisdiction of General Shepard or Kate Laswell as we're seeing here. Which means that Alex was a part of Task Force 141 along with Ghost before any of this ever happened. At least that's what it's seeming to look like. So now that we have answered all of those questions, the next question is, is how does this season three cutscene tie into the overarching story of modern warfare? And essentially it all comes down to one line that Captain Price says to Ghost. The client's plan is working. The armistice is in Verdansk. It's officially fallen. It's bloody chaos. The armistice in Verdansk has fallen. What exactly does this mean? To understand this, we have to go back to the end of the campaign and specifically look at the post-credits cutscene. In it, it says this. Nice hit. What's his name? We don't know, but he's got friends in high places. This is Russian intel. Where did we get this? My counterpart in Moscow. The CIA working with the FSB. Not the first time. Kamarov. Captain Price. Nikolai. I'm in joint command with Sergeant Kamarov of the Allegiance. Let's put our differences aside. Together, as armistice, this is our first direct action against the Al-Qatal army. So the armistice is a joint operation between the Coalition and the Allegiance to work together against Al-Qatala and Imran Zakaev. And this plan probably would have worked, but as we see in the Season 1 trailer, Nikto and some Allegiance soldiers shoot down an Al-Qatala chopper containing gas. Now once they do so, some Coalition soldiers show up and all of a sudden, the Allegiance is fighting against the Coalition. During this entire thing, Al-Assad overwatches this knowing his chopper was shot down but doesn't care because the allegiance and coalition are fighting against each other tearing armistice apart and this is similar to what we see in season two cinematic when ghost shows up he says this price something's wrong in verdansk they're targeting their own we need to find out why send fighters i can trust ghost out so basically in season two, Ghost finds that Al-Qatala and Al-Assad's plan is working, that the Armistice soldiers are now fighting against each other. The Allegiance and Coalition are going head to head along with fighting the current war in Verdant. And along with that, Ghost asks for soldiers that he can trust to fight alongside him. And that's exactly what he gets in season three. Captain Price sends him a bunch of soldiers, including Alex, that Captain Price knows he can trust and once again, are probably in Task Force 141. And that is when we find out this. The client's plan is working. The armistice is in Verdansk. It's officially fallen. It's bloody chaos. 
Tell me something I don't know. So that plan for the Coalition and the Allegiance to work together as Armistice has fallen apart. Zakaev's plan the entire time was to make this happen, make them fight against each other so that they and Al-Katala could totally take over for Dansk. And it worked. So where this leaves us is kind of unclear. With the beginning of Season 3, we now know that Ghost is working alongside soldiers he can trust, specifically alongside Alex. Now, we don't know what their next move is now that Armistice has fallen, but we know that they are going to try to take back Verdansk and that fight against Alcatala, Al-Assad, and Imran Zakaev. But we don't know what that next move is yet. That'll be until season four. So as always, guys, I'd love to hear what you think about all of this down in the comments. If you have any theories, ideas, let me know what they are down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed the video, it is always appreciated. If you do hit that like button, it really does help with the channel and it is always appreciated. And it shows me that you want to see more story videos like this one. And on top of that, if you like what you see here, you want to stay up to date on all my videos, want to stay up to date on all of the stories, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn notifications on. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, let's get evil. We are